गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो आई एम कुमार सीनियर सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर एट अमेजोन सो वॉट वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग टूडे टूडे विल बी सींग कंट्रोल कंट्रोल फ्लो स्टेटमेंट्स सो ये वी डिट फिनिश सम वट ऑफ ऑपरेटर्स दैट वी विल कंप्लीट टूडे फर्स्ट एंड देन वील गो टू कंट्रोल फ्लो स्टेटमेंट्स ठीक है लेट्स गेट सेट एंड लर्न तो फर्स्ट वील रिवाइज वॉट वी डिड ये सेम सिमिलर फॉर्मेट will answer four or five questions just open your chat and uh, i'll read it out read the question out you can put the option please do this quick which one of these is not a primitive data type a int b float c string d char yeah c string so int float and character is our primitive data types there are eight primitive data types in java and string is not a primitive data type it's called non primitive data type so next is which is the correct definition to declare and initialize a variable age is equal to 40 int age is equal to 40 age is equal to int 40 none of the above yeah int age is equal to 40 is the right answer this why this is not valid because we don't have int here if it was if there was int this is also valid because we are ca casting 40 to int so we must declare data type in java the, if there was int here and colon here if this was also right which one of these is not a arithmetic operator yeah equal to equal to is an assignment operator so uh, what are Two other arithmetic operator plus minus multiply divide and this is a modulo. Okay. Next, what is the result of system dot out dot print ln eight by three? Is it two point six 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 seven? B two C three D none of the above. Yeah, it's B two. So, uh. whenever there is a divide function that doesn't involve floating point numbers let's say these are both both of the numerator and denominator is an integer then java will always output integer how will how it will do it doesn't do round off so if, if the answer is greater than 2.5 i will round off to 3 no it will always do floor function so in in math there is a floor function right like this if we use this symbol so it will do that uh, the integer which is less than that number greatest integer that is less than that number floor function okay so the answer will be 2 which one of these is a purpose of relational operator this is the last question we'll just finish the revision and then we'll start the class the answer is c compared to values or variable so i'll go with each options allow for numerical calculations this is arithmetic operators plus minus multiply divide and modulo perform logical operation these are logical operators and or and not compare two values or variable these are relational operators uh, uh, greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to equal to and not equal to assign value to variable this is also this is an assignment operator this also has equal to and uh, what else uh plus equal to minus equal to divide equal to modulo equal to multiply equal to okay so these are the operators so we have done most of the revision now let's see think about this why is it important to choose meaningful names for variable can you think of a scenario where a poorly named variable could cause confusion can you even answer this okay i will answer so why is it important because let's you wrote your code today and it is your application is running let's say after 5 days some bug has come if your variable names are not good you will not understand your code let's say you want to calculate average sales per day okay so you have you know what is the total sales and you have declared int a is equal to 
total sales value so let's say 1 crore rupees let's say okay and uh, int b is equal to number of days 30 days so what you will do to calculate or oh, let's keep it let's keep the 10 days okay so average sales per day what will you do 1 crore divided by 10 which is 10 lakhs okay but you have stored those those thing as int a is equal to some number right so if you do int a is equal to when when you check the code again you will not know what is meaning of a you will not remember that so you have assigned some value but you don't know what is that value so yesterday when we were seeing most of the variables we have named uh, some somewhat meaningful so it's like age is equal to 40. So you know at least that value is age. We might not know whose age, what age, all those things we might not know, but at least we know it is age. Okay. So that's why uh, choosing meaningful names for variable is important. Your name can be little big, but uh, if it is meaningful, it will help you to remember your code. Okay. And why do programming languages have different data types? What would be, what would happen if there were only one data type? So yesterday we had seen this. Uh, I'll just close the chat. Because uh, if there was only one data type, unnecessary memory usage will be there. Why? So if you just require to store a character, but since we don't have uh, multiple data types, uh, you have to store it in string that can be of higher bits, but character is of less bits. Okay, so unnecessary memory usage will be there, and uh, your memory can fill up so fast. So that is one thing, and next it will cause confusion for Java also. So when your Java code is uh, executing, Java will not understand ki what value it is. What are what are the operations that it can perform? So once it gets value during runtime, it has to figure out. Oh, this is character. I can do only this. Oh, this is int. I can add, but I can I cannot uh, do maybe uh, I cannot loop through int. Like in string, we can loop through characters, right? Like that, we cannot loop through. So uh, that has to that Java has to figure out at runtime. If there was only one data type, it would make Java very slow. It is same as not having a data type. It, it is same as dynamically typed language. Okay, so that's why uh, programming languages have different data types which manages memory efficiently one second it helps compiler to know which data type you are using okay this question i did not ask in think about this yesterday i have just added today but this is very important thing can anyone tell me difference between single equal to and double equal to i'll just close this after this you can start our class Okay, I will tell single equal to is assignment operator. So int age is equal to 30. So you are assigning that value to 30 to age. Okay. But double equal to is comparison, relational operator. Okay. You want to see if age is equal to 30, like that. Okay. Age is equal, to, if you use age is equal to 30, it will return true or false. It will tell whether that value comparison is true or false. But if you do this, age is equal to 30, that means you're assigning 30 to age. Okay, that is, this is the difference. Please remember this. Most of the time while coding, we might miss this and uh, this will create compilation error or this might confuse your code. So anything can happen. Okay, so just remember this. So today, Today class, what we'll see, we'll see types of operator, the remaining types, two or three types, which we have missed. If else statement, so in control flow statements, if else statement, 
स्विच के स्टेटमेंट फॉर लुक वाइल डू वाइल लुक ठीक है विल सी दिस ठीक है लेट स्टार्ट सो फर्स्ट विल रिवाइज व्हाट आर ऑपरेटर्स सो ऑपरेटर्स आर स्पेशल सिंबल्स और कीवर्ड्स दैट आर यूज्ड टू परफॉर्म ऑपरेशंस ऑन वेरिएबल्स एंड वैल्यूज ठीक है so these are some special symbols it might be some keywords also so this what what does this help in it helps in performing operations on variables and values so some let's say example add so this plus sign is used to add to integer variables add to float or double variables okay add to values you can just write 2 plus 3 okay they are fundamental to manipulating data because that's how data is being manipulated using operators and controlling the flow of a program okay so we will see how operators control the flow of the program that we will see today control flow statements so what what were the types of operator arithmetic operator assignment operator relational operator logical operator so these four we have seen yesterday arithmetic is for calculation assignment is for assigning values to variable relational operator is for comparison and logical operator is for logical operations like and not and or okay today we'll see unary operators bitwise operators and ternary operators okay i'll just start the demo so today we left here okay operators mein we saw arithmetic operators theek hai we saw assignment operators how to assign these are the six assignment operators then we saw relational operators which is used to confirm, uh, compare compare and we saw logical operators theek hai or and and not theek hai so these these are the operators i'll just create a new file operator part 2 let's say theek hai theek hai let's start start with unary operators so these are uh, the next three are like the first four first four which we have seen those are like logical operator like uh, not the logical in the tense those are the operators which we have used in our daily life lot of time so for example greater than less than all those symbols we have used we have used and not or in our statements uh day to day life if you do this and if you do this you will get this something like that okay so those also we have used and uh, assignment we are, we might not have used but that's equal to symbol that most of you know and arithmetic operations most of us know from the childhood but remaining these four unary operators Uh, see these three unary, bitwise, and ternary. These these are the three operators which we don't use regularly. Okay, unary we might, but uh, I will just go through each of these operator. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So there are four unary operators. One is plus. I'll explain what is the difference between assignment plus and unary plus, and one is minus. Sorry, one is minus, one is plus plus, and one is minus minus. Okay. So this is called increment. This is called decrement. Okay. These are unary operators. So what is difference between assignment and unary? So from word unary, that means it is applied on only one variable or value. ठीक है, so what is that one variable or value called in operators that is called operand, so let's say uh, int a is equal to two plus three, let's say I am writing, ठीक है, so this is an operand, this is an operand, so in assignment operator we use two operands always, so there will be two operands in unary operators it's always one operand, that's why it's called unary, unary means one. One operand, okay. Operand. This is the word operand. 
ऑपरेटर्स ऑपरेट ऑन ऑपरेंट ठीक है सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ यूनरी ऑपरेटर एग्जाम्पल लेट से यू वॉन्ट टू असाइन अगेटिव नंबर हाउ विल यू डू इंट नेगेटिव नंबर और यू के नॉट लाइक राइट लाइक दैट इंट नेगेटिव और विच कैन राइट लाइक दिस नेगेटिव नंबर ओके इंट नेगेटिव नंबर इज माइनस थ्री ठीक है Here this minus, we are not doing assignment. See, we are not doing arithmetic. It is not subtracting something from minus. So it is just acting on three. So this is called unary operator. You can do something like this. Int, let's say, on some example of number. Int another negative number is equal to minus number. You can do like this. This is also valid. so here this minus is called unary operator because it is operating only on one operand theek okay? hai similarly this is easy to understand because there is no any other way to define any negative number theek okay? hai you just you have to put minus sign before a number or else it doesn't become negative right that's how negative numbers are written but for plus you can do something like this ठीक है, बट दैट्स रेडेंडेंट बिकॉज इवन इफ यू डोंट यूज दिस इट्स द सेम सो दिस इज मोस्टली नॉट दिस प्लस इज मोस्टली यूज ओनली इन असाइनमेंट नॉट एस यूनरी ऑपरेटर बट दिस इज ऑल्सो वैलिड इन सिंटैक्स इन जावा सो इफ यू गेट सम क्वेश्चन वेर समन एस रिटर्न इंट नंबर इज इक्वल टू प्लस फोर डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज दिस इज ऑल्सो वैलिड सिंटैक्स दैर विल बी ऑप्शन दिस वोट एक्सिक्यूट बिकॉज देर इज अ extra plus sign without any operand that means it won't like you should not choose that option you should know that this is an unary operator and this will execute so it is saying see this is unary plus operator you can remove it will remove okay so whenever java fails the id fails that there can be some improvement it will always suggest so let's say it is suggesting variable this another negative number is never used so if it is not used why are declaring like that it's telling okay so this this is one class of unary operator okay so next is increment and decrement so it's like a counter so there is this one machine right when we do let's say some puja there if you want to do something one or eight times or something like that in our home there is a small counter if you press that uh, the count will increase one by one okay there will be one button i don't know if you have seen that but yeah so there are counters right uh, just that just increments a number by one okay so these increment and decrement operator will perform operation on numbers and they will increment it by 1 or decrement it by 1 so increment means increase it by 1 and or decrease it by 1 so that 1 is hidden so for example you want to write add 1 to this let's say theek okay? hai so let's 5 theek okay? hai this is the number and you want to do sorry on you want to do number plus 1 theek okay? hai this is that This is thing. This is what you want to do. Okay. So most of the time, increments, decrements, is just a simplification of bigger expression. Okay. So what you can do, you can just do number plus plus. This means increment number by one and assign it to this. Okay. ठीक है, so let's say if I just print system dot out dot print ln, add one to this, ठीक है, what you should get? Oh, you are getting four, you are not getting five. So there are there is two difference. If you see, there are two ways you can increment, ठीक है? so the value changed at number plus plus is never used 
So what it is telling? It is there are two types of increment. One is post increment. One is pre increment. Okay. So what is pre increment? If you do something like this, this is pre increment. Okay. So I will explain the difference. Wait for a minute. Now you see the number is the answer is five. Okay. So what happened just now? When you put plus plus before a number, then now let's print this also. System dot out dot print ln number. Okay. And we'll do one more thing. Int add one post to this. Like to just to show its post increment number plus plus. Okay. So let's print this as well so that it's easy to understand. System dot. Sorry, we can, because the number has changed, it might be a little confusing. I'll just put another number in number two is equal to four. Okay, and this is using number two. And let's print number two as well. Okay, so now what we are doing, let's comment out this so that it's not confusing. We have number is equal to four, we have number two is equal to four. So in one of the number we are doing, Pre increment and one of the number we are doing post increment. Okay. So let's run first. Number plus one is done first and it is assigned to this. Okay. So even if you don't do assignment, you can just do num like this. This is also a valid syntax. So what this increment and decrement does is whatever operator it is, uh, whatever operand it's operated on, it will increase the number for that. So it it is if you if I write this statement very big, it is equal to int add one to this is equal to number plus one. No no is equal to number and before that int now number is equal to number plus one. So this is what it is doing. Initially what I told is not correct. So it is doing something like this. Okay. So it is, if I just comment it out, these two lines is converted into a single line. You just using this operator. So what it is doing, it will add, since it's a unary operator, it's operating on that. It will add, it will increment the number. It will not add one to this. It will increment the number and it will assign to this variable. So this is, these are the two steps it's performing. Okay. So we, now let's see the output. So since it's pre-increment, after the increment, number will be added. Since it's post-increment, first it will number will be assigned and then it will be incremented. Okay. So these are the two difference. Uh, let's see number four. What happened to number four? First I am like uh, pre-incrementing. So number is incremented to five. You will see number and number two is always printed five. So increment is happening for sure. But what gets assigned to the variable? So here five gets assigned to the variable. So it is doing increment and then assigning. Post increment may first assignment. It is assigning the four number, but it is uh, incrementing the number two by one after assigning. So that is the difference, okay? Any confusion, please ask me now. I think uh, if there are any doubts in chat, no, there are no doubts. So I will just write it out so that pre-increment is equal to increment, increment operand by one. So whatever operand is there and then assign Okay, post increment, assign first and then in, do increment. So if you just write like this, let's say you are writing number plus plus. Here there is no assignment. 
we are not doing some assignment. So here it will just increment. Okay. Again, if you do plus plus number. Okay. Both are same now. Now if you just print, what, what will you get? Number, just if you print number. So already five, it has become here six, seven. Okay. We'll just print seven. Okay. Seven. So this is increment operator. Same is the case is decrement. So uh, the things remain same, pre-decrement, post-decrement, that is the same. Instead of adding by one, you are reducing by one. So let's say I'm doing number minus minus. Okay, and minus minus number. Let's see what happens. Sorry, I didn't print that. You'll see five back, okay? And now if you assign int decrement, no, decrement check. So we are checking decrement, minus minus number. So what it will do? And now print these two. So what, it, what will be assigned? Four will be assigned to this because it is pre-decrement. If I had done like this, post decrement, Five will be assigned to this, then the number will be dec decremented. So if you see five, five was the result. Okay. I hope unary operators are clear. We have plus minus. So plus is mostly not used unary plus, but unary minus is to define negative numbers or else it's not possible to define negative numbers. Next increment and decrement. Increment increments the oper operand. And if you are assigning to it, there are two ways to assign pre increment post increment so pre increment it will first increment and then assign post increment it will first assign and then increment okay so that is the unary operator okay i will just check if there are any doubts okay. no doubts you can put your doubts on chat i will regularly check next let's go to bitwise operator how many of you have worked on binaries? Binary numbers? Okay. Binaries are zeros and ones, which is what computer understand, right? Okay. So we will see some bitwise operator. Maybe we'll see one or two examples. Give me a minute. Uh, just give me a minute. I'll just drink water and come. Just a minute, I'm coming. Yeah, I'm back. So bitwise operator, may, there are few operators. One is bitwise or, okay? So bitwise or, I will explain what is meaning of bitwise. Please be patient. Next is bitwise and, okay? Bitwise X or, okay? Bitwise complement, its name is complement. And there are bit shift operators also, it is, slightly uh, different. So we'll see a uh, shift operator maybe in the future lectures. Let's not confuse it here because I have to cover control flow statements as well. So these are the four operators. One is bitwise or, so instead of like logical, oper logical operator double, sorry, not this, this one, yeah. So double uh, this, what is called uh, pipe, it, you can call this as pi. So instead of double, you, you have to use single in bitwise. And and looks like this. Instead of double and like this, XOR looks like this. Okay. And complement is this symbol. Okay. So these are the four bitwise operator. Okay. Now what you have to uh, 
what is the meaning of bitwise? So that is the first thing. So let's say we have two binary numbers. Zero, sorry, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. This is one binary number and one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. Okay, this is one, another binary number. So what is meaning of bitwise or? So bitwise or means every bit it will take. So this is one bit, this is one bit. So it will compare, it will do or for every bit. This is another bit, this part. This part is another bit and this part is another bit. So it will do or for that. So what is, let's do this for this. If I want to do just bitwise or let's say one, one. What is an or function for that? One, okay? Zero, one, one. Zero, zero, it's zero. And one, zero, it's one. Zero, one, it's one. Zero, zero, it's zero. So this will be this will be the result of the bitwise order. Okay? But you don't have to specify binary numbers. You can do this with values, but it will convert them to binary numbers, do bitwise or, and then return back you the number. Okay? So that's how it works. Let's see an example. Let's do this int uh, num int value one is equal to five. Let's say int value two is equal to let's say seven. Okay. So what is five in binary? Can anyone tell? It is zero one zero one. Okay. It's one zero one actually, but I'm just adding zero. And what is seven in binary? It's zero one one one. Okay, so this is seven. Okay, now what you want to do? I want to do bitwise or. Okay, int result is equal to value one or value two. That's how you do. You, if you do this, sorry, this this is not valid. This is for logical operators to work. You should have expressions at both sides, true or false. But here it is value. But in bitwise operator, it should be values. So don't, don't get confused. So what, what will be the result of this? Can anyone tell? If you just do or of this, one, one, one. What you should get? You should get seven back. Am I right? So result. If, what, if I just print result. Let's see. Seven. Okay. This is a seven. Okay. Now let's do and instead of or let's copy this result one. Okay. Now I do and what what will be and so in the and part it will become one zero one 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 one. So this part will become zero. Both of these will remain one. So it will become five. Okay. So now if I print just result one, you will see just the five. Okay. So bitwise, you are doing bit by bit or and and operation that is called uh, bitwise operator. So all operations on uh, for bitwise operator happens on integer and it will happen on bitwise, bitwise of binary number convert, converted for that integer. So let's say for five, this is a binary number and for seven, this is a binary number. And bitwise, we are doing something and then outputting the result. Okay. Now, next important thing is XOR. So, how many of you know what is XOR? So, XOR means if both values are same, return zero. That means uh, result is zero. Else one. Okay. So what is XR? If both are same, one and one, then it is zero. If it is zero, one, then it is one. Okay. So what will be the result? Let's say int result three. Not don't keep, let's not keep result three. XR result, let's say. That, that is easy to remember. XOR value 2. 
ठीक है वॉट वॉट डू यू थिंक द रिजल्ट विल बी सो लेट्स डू बिट ट्वाइस एक्स और ठीक है सो इफ यू डू बिट ट्वाइस एक्स और दिस आर सेम दिस विल बिकम वन दिस आर डिफरेंट दिस विल बिकम जीरो दिस आर डिफरेंट इट विल बिकम वन दिस विल बिकम जीरो आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ इट हैज सम प्री डिफाइंड लेंथ If it has predefined length, this one will come, or else we will just get one zero, which is just two. Okay. So either it should print two, or it should print what it should print, or it should print ten. Let's see what it prints. It's printing two. Okay. There is no predefined length for binary numbers, so let's not write like this. So what will be the result for this? The result for this will be zero one zero because these two are same. Then means it's zero. These two are different. It's one. These two are so it's just ten, which is two. Okay. So this is XOR. Next is complement. So complement bitwise complement is also a unary operator. Okay. That means it acts only on single operand. So it's like this. Int complement result. Let's say is equal to you just put value one like this. It works like this. You can't put like this. It will fail. Okay. What the what is that selling? Expected is colon, but you are putting something else. Okay. So that doesn't work. So it value one. Okay. So what is complement? That is the first question everyone will ask. So complement, it's like inverting every bit. Okay. So let's say value one. If I invert all the bits, what is the inversion? Inversion means z. Just put ulta. If it is one, put zero. If it is zero, put one. Zero one zero. This is complement. So. Have you heard the word complement anywhere? People tell complement colors. So how how do you find complement colors? There is a wheel. You have one color to find complement color. Just see the opposite end of that wheel. Just the opposite end. So you are. It is similar to that. You are just complementing one. So one complement is zero. Zero's complement is one. Okay. So just ulta. So for five, what is what we should get? We should get again two. So just print that. It will be again two. One point which I missed uh, is in the initial. Uh, this is the last free class. Okay. So this will be the last free class today. So you will get a YouTube video after this YouTube video. I think you can uh, take today's time. I think that uh, K K you can ask KSR. and you can decide whether you want to join this course or not but yeah this, this will be the last free class theek okay, i will just check this tomorrow or uh, by tomorrow i will tell you this theek okay? uh, uh next next what it is next is ternary operator so we have seen two types of operators already which was bitwise and unary operator now last is ternary operator so similar to unary unary is for single operand ternary operates on three operands ठीक है, so how does ternary look like in ternary example? Let's say this is the this. What you can tell? Let's say I will give you some reasonable example. If age is greater than sixty, let's say I I define an age, some value forty. Let's say if I tell if age is greater than sixty. retired or else not retired okay you want to assign var variable variable like that string is sorry boolean is retired you want to check okay so what you want to do if age is greater than 40 you should get if age is greater than 60 sorry if age is greater than 60 you should get true or else you should get false Okay, so you can do something like this: age greater than sixty. Okay, question mark. Check whether age is greater than sixty. If it is true, I want the value true. Sorry, true. Else, I want false. 
ठीक है सो दिस इज हाउ टर्नरी ऑपरेटर दिस एंड दिस मेक्स इट टर्नरी ठीक है सो दिस इज वन एक्सप्रेशन इज द ट्रू और फॉल्स एवेल्युएट दैट एक्सप्रेशन यर क्वेश्चन मार्क मीन्स एवेल्युएट दैट एक्सप्रेशन वंस यू एवेल्युएट इफ द एक्सप्रेशन इज ट्रू जस्ट गिव मी दिस वैल्यू you can write you can write like is int is retired and you can tell if it if he is reside, retired it will be 1 or else it will be 0 so the output value need not be true or false you can have like this string is retired and you can tell retired not retired this is also valid okay so if age is greater than 60 He is retired or else not retired. So this is a ternary operator. Only one ternary operator. Okay. So these two makes it ternary operator. Let's print this system dot out dot print ln. He is retired. Not retired because his age is forty. Let's do sixty one. Retired. Okay. Understood, right? So these are operators. Now let's start. Control flow statements. Before starting that, let me ask you: Anyone has any doubts? Sorry. Any doubts? Any doubts? How many of you? So we have completed operators: arithmetic, assignment, relational, logical, unary, bitwise, and ternary. So this. i'll just go quickly over this in arithmetic operators plus minus divide modulo and uh, multiply so these are the five operators assignment may equal to plus equal to minus equal to divide equal to multiply equal to and modulo equal to relational greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to double equal to that equal to not equal to logical may and or uh, and or not unary plus minus increment decrement bitwise bitwise and or xor complement and there are shift operator shift operators i will tell you uh, maybe next week's class i will take like small portion that i will take in next week the next is ternary operator okay so just an overview of all operators we have seen now let's start with control flow statements so what are control flow statements so from english word right control flow statements so there is uh, when you when i say main is the entry point of a program right so java will execute uh, line by line in the main function so if i am calling some other utility or some other class anything i am calling it will execute that one line so if there are five lines in main it will execute all the five lines and then it will uh, complete the code so that execution of all the lines is called a flow of a program so flow starts from first line uh, from the main function after that it will execute first line then it will execute second line maybe third line may we are calling some other class so it will go there and execute all the things that is being called and then come back and execute to fourth line fourth line we might be calling some other uh, class it will execute everything there and come back and then fifth line fifth line may we might be printing some result ठीक है, so that is the flow of a program. What will control flow statements do? You can control the flow of a program. So there are some statements you might want to execute based on some conditions. ठीक है, then these control flow statements are used. Let's see the definition. So Uh, control flow statements in programming or con constructs that allow you to control the flow of execution of your code okay based on some condition so let's say we are seen ternary operator if age was greater than 60 is retired or it's it's not retired okay so based on the flow of your code they will enable you to make decision okay so for example we'll see example i will when i uh, when we code we'll see examples 
they enable you to make decisions, repeat actions. So if you want to just repeat some actions again and again, and manage the order in which statements are executed. So in which order you have to execute statements, that also it will manage. Okay, this is a control flow statements definition. Let's see two types of control flow statements, conditional statements and looping statements. So conditional statements are if statement, if else, if else, if nested, if switch case. So these are the uh, conditional statements. Next is looping statements, for loop, while loop, do while loop. Okay, so uh, we will see what is meaning of conditional, what is meaning of looping, all those things we will see. So first we what is conditional statements? So how is flow of program important here? So let's say main function is starting. You can have some condition if age is greater than 60. If it is true, then execute some statement. If it is false, then just uh, end of the program. Nothing will happen. So this is one conditional statement. This is like if statement, which we are seeing. Okay. So how is that flow? If your condition is true, you are executing some statements or else you are not executing it. It is not that every part of the a code which you are writing is getting executed. You are skipping some part of the code. Okay. So that is how you are controlling the flow of program. You want the flow to go based on your condition. Let's say you can have another statement here. If it was false, execute another statement and then end the code. Okay. So this is how conditional statements work. So you can have multiple conditions multiple nested conditions or uh, like multiple if else like that. If this, uh, let's say we want to, I'll, I'll show examples that will be clear. Next is looping statements. We will see what is meaning of looping statements and then we'll directly go to code. Okay. Any doubts, please stop me. Please put it on chat. So from the word looping, what do you think? What is a loop? Loop is like go round and round. That's a loop. Okay. Okay. So uh, loop is continuously doing round and round, something like that. Okay. So lo how looping statements are? If you want to do some task repeatedly based on a condition, you can do looping statements. So how the how the flow will look like you will start initialization let's say you do something and you check condition see whether something is true for example uh if i have uh, in an array five numbers okay so for each number i just want to multiply by two and print the result so what i can do i can use loop statements or else I have to write number of 0 into 2, number of 1 into 2, number of 2 into 2. So number of 1 is 0 means I'm just accessing that 0th element. We have seen right yesterday uh, in data types array. So I don't know if there are 20 numbers, you might have to write 20 times. If there are 100 numbers, you might have to write 100 times into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. That will be very difficult for you, right? So that's why looping statements are there. You can check condition. So if, if you have reached the length of your array, then it will end. If it is not reached, so here the condition will be if the length of array is not reached, then if it is true, then it will execute the statement into two and it will print. Then it will increment, uh, it will go to the next element. This is increment or decrement based on what you want to do. It will go to the next element and check if the length is reached or not. If it is not list again, it will in, do into two and print. So that is how looping statement work. So you loop, uh, you do repeated tasks on an, uh, maybe an array, or you want to do something. I will see a few examples, then you will understand. Okay. Now let's see the code. I will just create. 
conditional statements. First, let's see conditional statements. Anyone feeling bored? I'll just give one line. What, how, what are we doing and how we are doing? So whenever you want to code, what is your main purpose of code? Create an application, complex application. So for that, what you need, you need some data. You need some storage of data. You need some computation. And you need some uh, flow of a program. So first, what we see, we have seen variables. We have seen data types. We have seen operators that will do help you to do some operations. So till now, if I have I give write a code to find average of three numbers, you can easily do because you know till operators. Now, if I tell write a code to uh, check if uh, uh, if he is male or female, if the gender is male or female, based on if it, if he is male, print something. If he is female, print something. If she is female, print something. So that it that you cannot do. That is what we are doing. Okay. So slow by uh, slowly we are uh, learning step by step, and we will do advanced coding as well. So don't worry about that. Okay. If you know if you know these things already, you you will get to learn new things in future lectures. So please bear with me. This is for everyone, and if people are fresh out of college. So in, in the initial uh, class, I took a statistics in which mid-level, there are there were around 50-60% and fresher were 40. So for this is some of some of the parts are for fresher. If you are feeling bored, please bear with me. You might learn something new even uh, if you already knew conditional statement. So let's say, let's start with if statement, if statement, only if statement, okay? So the syntax will look like this, if condition and just, I'm just putting in comments, so it's just syntax. Execute your statements here, execute your, whatever you want to do. So this is the syntax. If, so what Java people has done? Like in any language, they have used the word if only. They did not use condition statement, something like that, which is which will make it complicated. But this is readable. If this condition is true, execute this, or else don't do anything. Just do the things which uh, which is not. So let's say we can write something like this. Let's say I have account balance. Okay. Int balance is equal to, I have like 5,000 5, rupees, let's say. Okay. Now, what you can do is balance. So here we have used one assignment operator. Now, what for making a condition, what you can do if balance is greater than my item, I want to purchase an item. My item is worth 400. So what I'll do, if my balance is greater than 400, system, so you don't have to do say space here, system dot out dot purchase item. Okay. Else we are not doing anything. Okay. If you print this, purchase item. You can purchase. Okay. But if your balance is just 200, what will happen? You did not purchase that. So this is what control the flow of program means. Even though this line is there, but it did not get executed. Why? Because this condition is not satisfying. If will only execute this block if the condition is true. Okay. So this is if statement, only if. Okay. Next is if else, if else. So that uh, since these words are English words, you can understand very easily. This this is like if the condition is true, do something else, do something else. So it this syntax remains the same. You just have to put else. 
it will be like this. I'll just uncomment so it's easy for you to understand. Else execute your else statement here. Okay. Let's say true. Okay. So this is the syntax of if else. Okay, so if this is true, this will execute. If it is false, this will execute. Okay, so one example which I told if gender, let's say character, character gender is equal to M. Okay, if gender is equal to male, what you want to do? I am male or my gender is male. This is what you want to print. My gender is female. Okay. See, my gender is male. But what if you do F? My gender is female. See, not here, sorry. Here you have to do F. So if she is female, this will not be true and it will go to this. My gender is female. Okay. So this is how control flow statements work. Any doubts, please tell me. Any doubts you have? So we have seen if statement, we have seen if else statement. I will give you some example program today. You can just try them and run them and see if you have installed Java in your system. Or else you can use some online compiler and try to code this. So it is not like uh, if you just see the code, you will remember it or you know how to code. You will have to practice it. Okay. So this is how if else. Now next, what we'll see? If else if. Okay. Now let's say uh, there is a uh, there is a survey you are doing. Okay. In the form you are collecting age. So based on age, you want to tell key. Ha. Huh, let's say if. If he is a child, then the result is like this. If if the survey, if he is a uh, adult, the result is like this. If he is a, a somewhat older, he's the result is like this. Okay. You want to categorize uh, based on age what he is. Okay. So for example, let's say I have taken here, let's say int age is equal to forty. Let's say. Okay. If age is if age is greater than 0 and age less than 10 let's say okay system dot out dot print ln he is a child okay Child. Let's say you just want to return child. Here you can execute any number of statements. I'm just doing single statement. You can do, do something like this. String uh, category. Age category. Let's say. You have declared this. You can do something like this. Age category is equal to child. Okay, You don't have to print all this. Let's remove this print. Okay. Else, if age greater than not, let's keep 18. No, let's keep 10. Okay. And age less than. So this let's keep greater than less than equal to less than equal to 18. Okay. Age category 
so this is not and this is the and sorry teenager okay so no let's keep 19 okay 19 is also teenager okay so this is the syntax else if okay if else if else if else if finally else something like that else if age is greater than 19 and sorry i have habit of that and age less than equal to 40 okay age category is equal to adult okay else old let's say this is not let's keep 50 or no let's keep 60. so this is how so out of these four statements only one statement will be executed okay so only one statement will be executed out of this four now what you can do you can just print check what is the value of age category Now let's just let print. What what do you think you will get? You should see adult because the age is 40. Now let's change the age to 5. What you should see? Child. Now let's change to age to 18. Teenager. 70. Sorry. Hold it. Okay. So this is this is how now what you can do if you can do something like this if age category is equal to child system dot out dot print ln please give me chocolate something like this okay now if you just do six let's say what it will print Please give me chocolate. So once you do something and then you can do some other condition. So that's how that's how codes are written, right? If you if you want to do this, let's say in a business, okay. Next next we'll take one example of business. Uh, if you are joining a company and you want to do uh, coding, so what can be how what can you code there? Okay, so these are some simple dummy examples which might not be used in businesses this this is one real life example so if balance is less how can you purchase the item this can also be but this this is print no one will print this uh, but it can be used and this is also this can also be some somewhere it is used based on some survey or something or someone wants to classify in their uh, machine learning logic or something now let's see some actual business use case. First, what is the use case? First, what we will see what nested if. Okay. This is what we will see. Nested if. Okay. So the use case is we have an item. So you are managing a store. Let's say someone is giving you an order. Okay. So let's say he will tell I want item number. I want 10 items of this product. Okay. So you want to check if you have 10 items first. Then you want to check if that item is expired or not. If any of those item is expired, let's consider all the items in your uh, cart for that product is same. Expiry is same. Okay. Then you have to check if the if the product is expired. If it is not expired, you have to check uh, whether uh, let's say 
uh, the amount he the customer is paying is correct or not whether the amount is paid or not if it is paid you can give the customer so this is the logic you want to build so okay so we will have one number uh, stock this will check how many numbers we have let's say 30, 15 this is a stock so the, we have 15 items of the product next we will have one boolean to check if it is expired or not let's that let that be true in real case scenario you will get these numbers from some database or some inventory and this expired what you will get is expired date you just have to check with current date it is whether it's greater or lesser so just i'm not just com complicating that i'm just making it simple you have these values okay int stock is equal to 15 is expired and int amount like uh, the value of that product value is equal to 10 rupees let's say okay now let's come with customer int what customer is ordering order quantity is equal to 10 let's say you want to order 10 items now int what what amount is ready to pay is equal to 100 okay anyone hearing me i think i am getting internet is unstable you can hear me okay let's proceed so this is yesterday 10 items of this product these are the things we have declared okay now you see uh, there are a lot of variables added all those are meaningful variables now you can write the code if first what you think if your order quantity is less than stock okay then only you can purchase the item right else what you can print system dot out dot print ln out of stock so whenever you order in swiggy or somewhere right you will see sometimes out of stock how is that done it's done like this only if your order quantity is less than stock then it's fine okay next what you want to do the product should not be expired if is expired then you just print no if it is not expired i just want to put not operator i just want to place everything on else so what is meaning of nested inside if you can put another if nesting it it's like a tree okay so control flow will go from this if it will check if it is false it will directly go to here it will not go inside this now if inside this there can be another if if it is expired if it is not expired if it is not expired do something if it is expired sorry all our products are expired now something like this okay next you what you will check if amount paid let's say keep this as amount paid amount paid is equal to order quantity into value if this is equal or if you if you want you can just tell amount paid is greater than equal to you just care if it, he is paying more that's fine but at least you should pay this much okay you will just in the else if it is not you can just tell system dot out dot print ln amount is not amount is not fully paid you can print like this okay but if everything is there you can just print congratulations for purchasing our order on giving us the order let's say this is what you want to do so you, what you have done you have done multiple nested ifs so first condition you are checking order quantity is less than stock if less than equal to because if it is equal to then also we have to sell so see just because of equal to your lo whole logic might go wrong if you have one of the item and someone is trying to order you will not uh, you will tell out of stock. So you'll have to be little careful of when you are coding things. 
check it multiple times add some unit test cases we'll see how to do that in the class but yeah if order quantity is less than stock if it is not you will tell out of stock if it is expired you will tell sorry all our products are expired now if the amount paid is not fully paid you will tell amount is not fully paid if everything is satisfied you will tell congratulations on giving us the order okay let's run this so sorry all our products are expired now why because it's expired is true let's put it in false congratulations on giving us the order now let's put stock as 5 okay let's see is ordering for 10 out of stock okay now let's say amount he paid is 90 and the stock is 15 again amount is not fully paid so this this is how you control the flow of a program. Now I'll just cross it out so that you can see it completely. So this is nested. See, you can see inside. Okay. So first it will check this condition. If it is true, then it will execute this whole part or else it will execute this. Next, it will check this condition. If it is true, then it will execute this part or else this. So if, if this is false, none of this will execute. It will only execute this one. So with simple if else, see the amount of complication you can do. Okay. So I think uh, conditional statements are done. So we just have 10 minutes. If possible, I'll just cover looping statements. So we have seen what is looping statements. We will have initialization. We will have condition checking and we will loop. Okay. So what is the syntax for looping statements? First, we'll see that. Okay. So there are three types of loops, while loop, for loop, do while loop. Okay, while loop, for loop, do while loop. Okay, so let's start with for loop. Okay, so syntax is for. For this array items, do this. So until that condition is satisfying, you will repeatedly do that. So syntax is for. Inside this, first you initialize, let's say, in i is equal to 10, let's say, i is equal to 0. So this is what you initialize. Expression, test expression, i less than 10, i plus plus. So this is, this is where increment operator is used. So what is meaning of this? You initialize a value and you check, always you check if i is less than 10 or not. Then, at every iteration, you increment i as 1 okay okay so this is how code will look like then what you can do inside this you can print something you can do something this is a for loop loop let's see an example you i think you will understand i is equal to 0. So we have to declare i first int i. Okay. Without that, how will it know what is i? 10 and i plus plus. You just do system dot out dot println i. Okay. Now, if you print this, what will happen? You will see 0 say like n till 9 it is printed. When I I crossed 10, it is not printing. Okay. So I will just explain each of this from the diagram. Okay. The diagram, if you just you can just remember the diagram. Or from the English itself, from the quote statement, you see that from that itself you can understand. For i is equal to zero. That means start with i is equal to zero. Until i is less than 10. And increment i one by one. Or you can do something like this. i is equal to i plus 2. Something like this. 
let's see what it will do it will just do two every two two four six eight so you have to do some increment here usually people do i plus plus if they just have to increment by one then do something here you can do anything you want based on your logic you can do something okay so we will see the diagram you will understand now start initialization initialization we told that i is equal to zero then what you are checking condition checking if i is less than 10 is i less than 10 no then true say statement print system dot out dot print ln i which is zero zero is printed now it incremented i plus plus one it came okay it will again check if i is less than 10 no it will do this then till i gets it will print 9 then it will increment then it will become 10 it will check if i is less than 10 no it will false then it will exit so this is how looping statements work we will see while loop do while and for examples tomorrow but i'm just giving you overview okay for example what if i do like this what will happen can anyone tell me so i'm just decrementing i started with zero i'm just decrementing i will never reach 10 so if you see what will happen it is just printing some negative and it will run non-stop because this condition will never be true and it will keep on executing so this is one thing which you should be very careful so i just stopped that code i have interrupted myself but you can see how many values it has printed it has printed 64 lakhs value in an like maybe two three four five seconds that's all so these things you have to be careful you are you should make sure your loops are getting exited there must be some conditions you want to there must be at least after some point definite finite condition where your loop gets completed or else your code will run like this because i was printing i came to know that oh this is getting negative and that's why it's continuously getting printed and this condition is not getting satisfied so this condition is not getting false okay so this is how looping works okay let's stop this for today any doubts please tell me now okay now let's see let's recall we, we have seen types of operator so only one one thing which uh, i want to come back tomorrow is complement all the thing and when i studied when i have worked it it was long back it is just uh, uh, it will just do inversion zero to one that is the meaning of complement but i don't know why it printed that that i will see so types of operator we have seen unary operator bitwise operator ternary operator please practice this take an example uh, i think this video will be uploaded today evening you can just take some examples Think of your own TK. How, how will I use bitwise operator? And or just let me try an example. You try an example. Put uh, uh, let's do 10 and 20. What will be the result? Just try it out. Just convert them to binary. You try it out whether you are getting ex the ex expected results or not. Unless you do this regular practices, it's hard for you to catch up. You will forget. TK. So we will do some practice problems tomorrow. And then if time permits, I will teach what are functions, basic definition of function and how we can define a function. That's all. That's all we'll do tomorrow. We will see first, we will see complementing. And then we will see while do while and for loop examples. Okay. Then we will practice some problems. If time permits, we will go and see function methods or else you can do it on Monday. Okay. Next we saw if else statements. So there is one conditional statement which I forgot is switch case. That also we'll see tomorrow. Okay. So as the time was completed, I just want to show you an example of looping statements so that you get the idea between difference difference between conditional and looping. So conditional statements, you just do something based on condition. So do this or don't do this. But in looping statements, you loop, you do it multiple times. 
if the, until the condition is not met you will do okay so there is while do while that is also similar to for we will see uh, the differences tomorrow so in think about this let's ignore this we will see this tomorrow so how would you explain the concept of a loop to someone who has never programmed before can you think of a real life analogy so please think this how would you explain a concept of loop you can take screenshot and you can think about this today just ignore this what are the differences between for and while loop when when you might choose one or the other we can see tomorrow one interesting exercise i want you to code this out please code this out find out what is the definition of leap year we just know if it is divisible by 4 it's a leap year sometimes it is not just see the exact definition okay there is something on when you divide by 400 or 100 or something something some some complex logic is there so take one variable int year is equal to and use conditional statements and check if it is leap year or not so i am just telling given input year hard coded as variable you can put as i was doing int year is equal to and you can change values there print if the year is leap year or not i just want it is leap year if it is leap year or else it's not it is not a leap year okay can you do this exercise tell yes or no even if you don't have java environment you can find some online compiler java and try to code this okay or else at least see the definition of leap year 